Hey everybody, welcome back. Right to the point, police, social workers, counselors, people that are in these types of fields, they are trained to trick you. They are out to get you. I've said this many, many times. Not all of them, but the majority of them, they're out to get you. They're out to prove a point. They're out to make a mark. They've got something to prove and they will use you to do it and they will crush you and destroy you to do it. And this conversation was sparked by a rather lengthy comment that was left in the comment section on one of my videos talking about Child Protective Services, scolding me for suggesting that CPS is out to attack their clients, that they're deliberately going after their clients and that they're trying to trick them, so on and so forth. Yes, the hell they are. Yes, they do. All social workers do. All counselors do. Police, probation officers. Like I said, you name it. Not only are they setting out to get you, they've been trained to do it. How do I know? Because I was trained to do it. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, people who have been watching for a while, they know this. I used to work for the Juvenile Justice Authority. I used to be the director of a YRC2. That's Youth Residential Center Level 2, which is a really nice way of saying the warden of a halfway house for juvenile offenders. I'm sure most of you know what a halfway house is. And you are required to take classes constantly. Also, when I was the director of a daycare, I had to do the same thing. You've got to be in a constant state of training, a constant train state of basically pointless training to waste money and to justify their system. They have to justify all the money they spend and they have to waste yours. Social workers, correction officers, probation officers, Lots of people have to do this. People in daycare, teachers, so on and so forth. And so I had to get out the book. I had to get out the book. There's my credentials. And this isn't even from the, uh, from the college years. This is just the stuff that I had to do when I was with the daycare and with the juvenile justice authorities, my uh, first aid and CPR, and just a bunch of different certificates and credentials from the hundreds of classes that I had to take over the years. That's an interesting one. See this one? Uh, see understanding s sexual assault and what professionals should know. This class was, I, I ought to uh, go back and do another video on this class. I got into an argument with one of the instructors in this class and one, I kicked her butt. So there's one in particular that I'm looking for here. If I can find it. If it's in this book, I think it was in this one. This is it. I'm pretty sure. Here we go. Certificate of completion. That's 36 hours, you see there, right? 36 hours of training in effective communication and motivational strategies. And the SEAL is the Juvenile Justice Authority of Kansas. And it says it right there, State of Kansas Juvenile Justice Authority. And that is a very, very nice way of saying manipulating clients. The 36 hours, I was there for a week and we did it in a prison, in a correctional facility. And it was all social workers, corrections officers, and probation officers in this, uh, in this class. like little more than 30 people and almost all women. I think there were two other men in the class and everybody else was female. Something I've talked about a bunch of times on this channel that all of these professions in the courts, in, um, in probation, in social work, counselors, uh, pediatricians, it's saturated with females and there is a problem there. And I've talked about that a few times, but that's not what we're talking about today. So a little more than 30 people, corrections officers, probation officers, social workers, and people that worked in facilities like mine. And I was one of three males, all right? And basically what this was described as, you saw what it said in the book, but you know, what they explained to us was that this was a system of communication that you could have with offenders or clients to get them to admit to wrongdoing or admit to knowledge about a situation in order to assist them. And what we gradually learned and was literally 
told to us was that this was a system designed to trick clients into admitting to or agreeing to something that they claimed not to do or to do something that they didn't want to do. To base a type of coercion without the threats. Uh, coercion can still be something that's unethical even though you're not threatening them. T typical coercion is like, I'll break your leg if you don't do this, as an example. But it's a, it, a subtle, a more subtle form. Uh, you're basically misdirecting them in your conversation to trick them into admitting to doing something that they wouldn't otherwise agree to. Like, um, I want you to enter this program, I want you to sign this, and they don't want to do it. With a line of questions that would be objected to in court. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about there. You starting to see what time it is here, folks? You're being lied to all the time. Now, let's say you're in court, right? and you're on trial for murder, you killed Billy. I'm just uh, throwing a name out there. They're accused of being killed Billy. You're innocent. And the attorney comes up to you, the prosecutor, and he says, so, did you enjoy it when you killed Billy? You can't answer that question. Either way you answer that question, you say you're guilty. Because if you say no, because that would be your first reaction because you didn't kill Billy. No, but you just reacted to the question, did you enjoy killing Billy, implies you still killed him. See, there's no way you can properly answer that question. And it should be objected to in court. It, the, the defense attorney should catch that and be like, hey, your honor, objection, and it, it, it will be sustained. Or the judge should catch it if the uh, defendant doesn't, supposed to, supposed to, the judge is not supposed to allow it. And that's how they... Uh, that's how they justify their system by pretending to be fair. But in other areas, right? Other areas of law enforcement, in social work, in counseling, in schools, they can lie and they can mislead you. And they're not only encouraged to do it, but like I just demonstrated, they're trained to. That was a required class. I had to go. 36 hours. I was there for, uh, for five days five days learning to manipulate my clients at the facility, which I didn't do because I considered it to be unethical. I considered it to be very unethical. Now, the idea here is that because your gut instinct tells you that they're guilty of something or that they know something, this is a system you can use to pressure them. It's another way it was described. But you don't really know that they're guilty and they may admit to something that they didn't do just to get out of it or to shut you up or because they're confused or because they're afraid or they may agree to enter a program or whatever under your um, coercion again just to get you off their back. And it, uh, to me, that was unethical. I didn't use their system. And it doesn't work anyways. You ever watch any of those like uh, true life crime dramas? And I don't mean like uh, like a, a cop show or something. I mean something like 48 Hours and stuff where they follow a detective around. Or it's a closed case file, but they talk to the actual people who were, um, who were part of the case. The actual detectives, some of the actual witnesses and so on. I used to watch a lot of these shows something in common with all of them. I don't know if you ever caught this. If you watch these kind of uh, dramatizations, they're always wrong. The detectives are always wrong. 99% of the time. And they'll sit there and they'll be like, oh, you know, I got a gut feeling about this guy and I'm pretty sure that he's guilty and, uh, you know, we're going to get it out of him. And they pressure these people and pressure these people. And then find out they had nothing to do with it. Didn't even know anything happened. And they move on to the next guy and it's the same BS. Oh, you know, I got a really good feeling about this guy. You know, I've been doing this for 25 years and I got a great gut feeling about people. And wrong again. And they move on and on and on. And they'll run over like five, seven, ten people. All wrong. All the wrong people. They didn't do anything or they didn't really know what was going on. But you pressured them anyway. You harassed them. You dragged them in for interviews. You threatened them. You lied to them. You put all kinds of pressure on them over and over and over again. And most of the time, they never find out who it was. 
someone else, somebody totally unrelated that they never interviewed gets picked up somewhere and tied to the crime. They either confess to it or evidence leads to them. So you were wrong the entire time. Your gut was full of shit. But you harass people. You ruin their lives. I, I, I saw some of these dramas where they talked about uh, they thought so-and-so killed his wife. And they followed him around for 10 years. Pulling him in on interviews, showing up at his job. Made his life hell. Turns out he didn't have nothing to do with it. You know, and that's just oh, just one example. I remember I, I remember one particular episode popped into my head. But I saw many of those. They're always wrong because of their gut feeling. And they're trained to do it, encouraged to do it. And they are not sorry when they're wrong. They're just doing their job. That old lie, right? So, yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate that. Like I said, I get the book here. And there's a lot of stuff in here. And there's more stuff like that. If I can find that one again, I'll show it to you again. There's a lot of stuff in here just like that. Or in the other book. I don't have the other book out. But yeah, essentially just trained to, and there it is, effective communication and motivational strategies, courtesy of the state of Kansas, to manipulate your children into confessing the things that they didn't do. <laughs> um, what can I say? If you get where I'm coming from, Please do give the video a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Check out some of the other videos. If you haven't, hit the bell icon so you'll know. Hopefully, they'll tell you when other videos come out. Uh, find me on BitChute now. Uh, a lot of s subscribers have asked me to mirror on BitChute. So I'm slowly catching up on BitChute, putting up older videos there. Coffee Talk channel on BitChute, and I'll put a link to that down below. And a lot of people asked also about, uh, do I have crypto wallets? Yes, I do, and I'll put links to those down below as well. So once again, I hope you I hope you feel me here. The, I I got that, and I'll and I'll use that comment in the next unhappy viewer mailbag video. They went on and on. I may have to paraphrase it a little bit. It was a big paragraph of just uh, scolding me for having the nerve to suggest that when you go to a child protective services meeting that. They've already got their sights set on you. You bet your ass they do. <laughs> you bet your ass they do. Not only in my personal experience, but in my professional experience, I know this is true. Most of the time, it is true. So, hey, what can I say? What can I say? But stay tuned because there is more to come.